okay um in the second part uh we are going to okay in the second part we are going to look at the triangulation of the plan and uh to be able to understand that we need to actually um look at how the pieces are actually connected so uh, for instance uh, we can look at the pictures of the mukarnas and i want you to notice that we we actually got this star shape out um, but i want you to look at how edges connect for instance if you look at this piece you can see that this edge actually goes to this point right so this edge is um, kind of this corner is connected there this corner is connected there so there's a triangle actually here of course it's a, a ruled surface um, but before understanding how to model this complexity here we need to uh, first understand which edge is connected to where okay so i'm going to start with this shape here so you can see that uh, these edges are connected to the uh, tipping point so uh, that's what I'm going to do actually. So I'm going to um, create a new layer, call it triangles. And this could be um, basically black. Um, and we could do uh, a command called extrude curve to point. So extrude curve to point would actually give us um, uh, the triangulation. Uh, in order to do this, you can also explode these layers so that you can on, only do it to one. So I do ex, extrude curve to point. So this is one of the connections. If I take mirrored copies of it, these will be the triangled surfaces that we want. Um, you can turn on or off the um, uh, the underlying image if you want but this is uh, the star shape so we start with um, single surfaces now when we switch to this polygon uh, it starts to get a bit more interesting so that let's um, let's actually look at it so we're going to uh, look here so particularly here for instance um, it might be a bit hard to see but let's actually find this image so this edge is actually broken into two pieces and you can see that it's actually symmetric so uh, this uh, triangle here this edge is going to this corner and this top edge is also going down to this point right so there are these pieces you can see there are triplets they are the same and the bottom piece is actually four of them they are the same and these guys are also repeating along the edges so um, I'm going to model this in triangles again. So uh, keep in mind, these guys are going up, these guys are going down, right? So if I were to do extrude curve to point, I just grab this corner, push it down, and I'll just explode this one, extrude curve to point. Um, this one is actually going here. Right, so this is a piece, this is a piece, and this guy is actually symmetric, and this guy is symmetric too. And those are all the pieces, uh, technically all the pieces that we need. There are also other additional elements here, which we are going to get into, but um, if you understand these symmetric relationships and how pieces actually connect, or how they go, uh, that pretty much uh, saves us from a lot of trouble. So I, I can just uh, basically mirror these pieces here as well so that will be um, the first two layers now I'm going to switch to 3d for a bit and show you how we are going to move actually in 3d so um, one thing that we have noticed is that the vertical uh, layers are pretty much consistent in Mukarnas right so we can call this as a unit uh, height let's say and relating it to the plan um, is going to be a bit tricky I mean you normally need uh, field measurements uh, but we can I mean for this exercise we can um, we can eyeball it we can also assume that um, for instance here the the center or the radius of the star shape 
uh, is actually defining kind of a globe, right? So we can actually say that um, the, the radius of the star is also the height of it. So that can determine um, our layer height, for instance. So if I switch back here, um, it will be basically um, whatever this radius is, that will be my height, right? So I'm, I'm just going to move this, um, start moving this up actually. <clears throat> so um, we can keep this where it is, um, but this point will be moved up upwards, right? So uh, one way of doing that uh, could be that I model a sphere here, uh, which would actually intersect here. Um, uh, the other thing I could do is move uh, this edge here vertically. So for instance, I can measure this. It's 3.726. But if we want to define this as a unit measurement, I can just scale the whole plan and call this uh, as one and move this back to my origin. So I'm just keeping it as a unit measurement so that we only focus on the proportions. Now this edge here, this edge length, the cent the radius of the star is one so that the height would be one again. Now if I put a point here, move it up, I can move it up by one. That will be the height of my Mukarnas. Now that seems a bit... Um, Let's see, maybe it is correct, maybe it's not. I mean, there is only one way of doing it actually to maybe move these um, triangles there too. So I'll just move these up. So that's uh, how the Mukarna starts. Of course, that's not the final shape, but that, that's how we are going to move it in uh, three dimensions. Um, now I can do the same thing to these layers, right? I can actually make copies of them uh, one by one. So basically, um, I'm, I want to also keep this plant here. Um, so let's let's actually make this somewhere else. For instance, I'm just going to move it 10 units. And we can just move these manually down. So all these go down vertical negative one. I'm just going to deselect these layers, move it vertical negative one, deselect these, move it vertical negative one. Right, so that's uh, those are the layers basically. Move it vertical negative one. Vertical. negative one let's see I, th I think it's starting to get somewhere right I think the layer heights uh, seem to me that they're fine actually maybe it's a bit too much but it's, it's actually not that important at this stage we can always scale them up uh, or topologically distort them let's move it down again negative one and this would be the final layer so we are actually going to move this down negative one. So those are our layers. There's actually one more, but I'm going to keep the last layer like that so that you can see how we distributed these layers. Now I'm going to model the triangles in plan and then move them in section here. So I, if I get these guys um, from this point to here, we can actually use the layer edge as reference. So that's the first layer. Uh, the second layer, remember how the second layer was, I can just move these two here and these points, they have to be moved down, right? There, there's an advantage of modeling these in, as triangles first so that we can understand the orientation of these pieces and um, then we can add the final definition to these uh, elements basically. So that's the second layer. Now for the third layer, remember we had some common elements. So um, the star is pretty much repeating here. So I can make use of, uh, make use of it, right? So whatever this piece is, that's actually going to repeat itself. Um, but these pieces are a bit more complex. Uh, now we get, we are getting new pieces. 
So um, let's actually look at what we have in picture. So I'm looking at the third layer now. So this is um, the first occurrence of the polygon. Uh, sorry, the, we are looking at here. So we place these, um, these stars again, which was a copy of this. And then we have symmetrical elements here too. So these edges also go down, you see? So there's some sort of slight movement. They, they might even look vertical actually. <coughs> and we get half of this piece repeated here along the edges. So let's look at that. <coughs> All right, so this one was actually, this guy was symmetric. If I'm not mistaken, let's see. Let's look at the plan. <coughs> yeah, we, we have to, um, we actually have to model the triangles here so that we can actually get them, get them right. So um, I probably made a mistake by copying this here. Um, it actually looks fine. It's just this piece, interestingly, actually mirrors here. You see the these pieces, there's actually six of them. And these pieces um, are symmetric. So basically, there will be a mirrored copy of it here, like this. This would be mirrored like this. And then whatever piece we have here, if I were to move in 3D, so we have uh, basically an edge here. So extrude curve to point, this would move down here, like so. And this one, um, I think this one is actually a new piece. So let's look at that. Yeah, that's, that's an edge. You see this edge goes actually to this edge. Um, this side actually goes down and this side goes to this corner. So let's see, um, we are actually going to go from this corner here and this went down. So I, th I pretty much think this would just go up and we will just repeat the same thing to the other side. So if I were to mirror this, this edge would actually go um, on that side. So, I, I mean, we can actually draw a new uh, edge line here and then extrude curved point. So the, the goal is to actually close up the Mukarna surface. So it's coming up pretty nicely. You can see these are the pieces. Of course, we are not looking at triangles in the 3D Mukarnas, but this will help us actually model these later. And I'll show you um, some tricks on doing that as well. So let's look at this um, piece now. Uh, this would actually have copies of these elements that we find here. So let's copy them down. So this guy would be here. And using symmetry, we can just replicate this whole process here. So uh, from here though, we don't have that piece. This piece actually, this edge goes down. So I just do this, extrude curve to point. So this goes down. So that's kind of a shape we are looking at. So let's look at the octagon to make sure that's what's happening. So this is the layer we are looking at. And we are looking at here, you see this guy actually goes down. So this is kind of a triangular face. And the rest is uh, kind of symmetric. And there are these six uh, pieces, six inner groups. Um, so those six inner groups are basically these elements here. So I'm just going to grab all of this, mirror it. And that's how that part is closed. Now from here on, it will be uh, pretty much straightforward actually, because um, these elements do repeat. So whatever we have here, it will be actually um, transferred to the bottom layers. So basically, um, for instance, if I were to grab this portion here, 
I can just uh, move it down. You can see that they overlap. So that pretty much is consistent. And wherever it doesn't repeat, I can just mirror it uh, by looking at the bottom edge. So now you can see that fits. And if we get half of this layer done, then technically speaking, um, we can get the other half done as well. So I can just copy all of this, mirror it, and voila. So that's how this structure actually uh, goes down. And I can already, like I, I have a pretty good understanding of this. Of course, it's a structure I've studied in my research, but um, if you want to uh, basically add a, a bit more definition to these elements so that you can see the orientation of these pieces, we can, we can actually model these uh, in another way. Uh, so actually, let me show you how to do that as well. So I'm just going to make a copy um, of this to its side. And basically, I'm going to lock the triangles and give it a new layer called surfaces. <clears throat> and uh, for these, um, all we have to do is actually rebuild these edges here and loft uh, these curves. So one way of doing that would be to draw, uh, let me actually give it a new um, color. Let's make it green. So let's say this, this is the edge of uh, this piece here. So what I would do is rebuild these curves to four points and I want them to be third degree and turn on the points. Actually, let's rebuild them uh, into three points and second degree. I think that will be easier to do. Now, when I turn the points on, these points would actually uh, share the same uh, X and Y as their bottom points, but they will have the same Z as their top points. Now, this is what I mean. If I do set point, select this point here, set X and set Y, and move it here, like overlap it with this point, and do the same for this one, right? Now their Z though, set point again, their Z has to be aligned with the top layer. Now that's the geometry we want, right? So this is basically our arc. And if I loft these two now, that's the surface we want. So I'll just move to rendered so that you can see that's the shape we are looking at. So that's why I think triangles are important so that we can start with lines, understand how the geometry is going to flow, then increase information, right? So because we're converting a line into an arc. Now, grabbing onto this, um, again, resorting to symmetry, you can just make use of um, symmetries here. So that will be our top star. Um, similarly, I'm going to model these pieces here. So I'll just show you how you can do that. Basically, the pieces that are moving down, I'll just draw two lines rebuilt those two lines into arcs. Now for these, these points would have the same X and Y as their end point, and they will have the same Z as their top point, right? So that's their geometry. So you can see that they're actually converging to a point. Now if I loft these, that's the piece in 3D. Now the crucial thing here is you can see that that shape actually is a triangle in plan projection, but in 3D, it looks quite different. So if I look at this in top view, you can see that that shape is the triangle itself. And you can pretty much keep uh, mirroring these elements in uh, plan and they will actually fit where you want them to fit. Uh, let's add these elements too. I think there are only a few pieces here um, so that we can um, we can make use of copying and mirroring. So these guys, set point, uh, first let's set their Z. Now these again. So there are two types of uh, shapes um, 
these are um, these guys basically have an edge at the bottom and have a point on top. So loft. So this one mirror it to the other side. So th th these are the actual pieces that we want. And once you get these, you can just mirror them. And the rest is pretty much uh, straightforward. So if I uh, basically hide the triangles, you can see that we are getting closer to the Mukarna shape itself, right? So these are the actual surfaces that we are seeing when we look at the pictures. Of course, there's a lot more ornament. So these um, triangles are added on top of it. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to kind of restrict it to simpler geometry so that we can be a bit more comfortable with um, handling this. So I'm, I'm just going to finish it up, um, like model these layers as well. So let's see, um, let's make use of these elements here. I'm actually going to go halfway so that this could go a bit faster. Um, there's actually a new piece here. We have to um, model these two elements. Um, let's see, I need this edge and this edge. So rebuild um, set point set their x and y to be on this corner and set point set their z to be the top layer. And if I loft, that's the piece. Loft again. This is the other piece that we were missing. Let me move to shaded view so that we can see these pieces and mirror these edges. Uh, now this guy is, I think it's made out of two pieces probably. If these guys are symmetric, this is what it has to be. And there's a new piece here probably. Um, it's kind of, it's a bit hard to actually tell. Um, but if I look here, for instance, these are symmetric. These are symmetric. I mean, the symmetry relationships here actually do help a lot, but uh, we, we are not so sure on the edges. So let's see uh, what we can get. Uh, the second, third, third layer. Let's look at the third layer. So we model this star, we model this, and uh, now if you look here, this is the shape we are looking at. So you can see we got this, these two, which are these two, and this guy is a new shape. So this edge goes here. So it's kind of a symmetric piece. Um, and that kind of repeats on this edge too. So I, I mean, um, we don't have this, but instead we have um, a line here. Some of these lines could be consistent, um, but basically that's what we want. X and Y. And when we loft it, that's the piece. And if I grab these, let's actually lock the layers as well. Mirror them. Um, that's pretty much it. That's going smoothly. So I'm wondering if there are any other pieces that we need to model. Probably not. So if I um, make use of these elements that we already have here, so let's copy them. Let's move this down here. So you can see that we already have them. Um, right, so I can just make use of mirroring. Here we have this too. And this guy is pretty interesting. It's actually a straight piece. You see, this is kind of a straight face. So what you can do is um, do, I guess, planar shape, planar surface. Um, let's see this, this, and this edge. Well, it doesn't give me that edge. Well, we could probably do extrude curve to point again extrude this curve to this point, that will be that face. And um, again, the even and odd layers, they kind of repeat. So we can move this down, grab hold of these surfaces here and mirror them. Right, so those that was layer four. Um, layer five will be similar to this. If I were to copy this whole layer here, Let's see how does it fit. Pretty much fits there. And grabbing these, let's mirror them. And this edge would be 
um, maybe a new shape I'm not so sure actually we don't have it anywhere else like this doesn't fit maybe this we already have it actually uh, the first star shape yeah so Mukarnas's are fascinating like they, they actually do use uh, common elements so that you don't actually have to worry about where to look for the piece they have similar geometric relationships and symmetry helps so um, that's basically it that's how you can approach uh, modeling of this Mukarnas um, I'm actually not going to um, finish it but I'll include one in the thumbnail for you so that you can see the full structure but you can see that um, these pieces are pretty much like the directions we wanted them to be and um, the nice thing is I'm, I'm just going to copy these to the bottom layers and just uh, finish it up and um, that's that's pretty much it uh, like I hope this is helpful uh, it's a I think it's a great modeling exercise because you not only understand um, how to solve a plan using trigonometry but also develop these sorts of three-dimensional relationships by looking at pictures of a model so uh, i hope you enjoy this exercise and um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below